everybody and welcome back to the Creative Life Studios. Today we're going to be playing in our illustrated Bible with some ink tints blocks and some really cool printables from a new company that I found called Keys of the Kingdom. Here I'm going through my ink tints blocks and just trying to match um, my colors. Um, so I'm just scribbling a little bit on the papers just to make sure that I'm in the right color scheme for this particular uh, set. So I am going to use the technique where I just kind of scribble it on there dry. I am using kind of a purple, a blue, and a hot pink to kind of match the colors in this particular uh, printable. Um, I found this when someone actually tagged me on this set on Facebook, knowing that I would love it. Um, and so, um, yeah. Uh, I had to get it, of course. Um, so I am just activating this uh, color, my colors, with uh, some water um, and just kind of playing with it um, to see how dark I want it, maybe how light I want it. Um, and what's great about these, if you've never used them before, if you've never heard me talk about them before, they, um, when they dry, they are, so they're actually an ink in solid form. So when they dry, they're permanent, but they activate like a watercolor. Um, so you can see my surface was wet and I went ahead and just added a little bit more of my color onto it and just hitting it with a couple different kinds of brushes just to kind of get a, a watercolor effect but a, a little bit more solid than your typical watercolor. And I'm just dipping it in uh, my water over there on the side and I wanted to break up that harsh edge so I'm pulling some of those over to give it um, kind of just more of a light fade over on that left hand side. And you can see I'm leaving that corner empty at the moment um, because I'm actually wanting to go back in with a different color here in just a little bit but I want this to be completely dry before I do that. And I wanted to add some texture. So this is actually a stamp that I carved. Um, and I'm just using it just to, while the paint is still wet, to lift some of that ink up, um, just to kind of give some texture. And of course I'm stamping over to the side and that'll be a fun little print to use later for something. And you can see it just is lifting that ink up and just some of it it's transferring a little bit to make some varying colors, but really it's just all about kind of breaking up that solid texture of the colored background. Um, I just thought it would be just a fun way to add some texture. Um, I'm doing the same thing with this kind of speckle, deckle, I don't know what you call it, stamp. Um, and again, this is, isn't is trying to get a really good image. This is all about just adding texture to the background of this project. And then I'm going to go ahead and set it aside. Um, I'm going to speed this part up quite a bit because I'm sure you don't want to sit there and watch me fussy cut forever. Um, so in case I didn't mention, which I don't think I did, we are actually in Ezekiel uh, chapter 37, um, verse 4 through 6, um, where it is talking about, um, I'll just read it to you. Verse 4 says, he said to me, prophesy concerning these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Lord says to these bones. I will cause breath to enter you and you will live and I will put you put on you tendons, make you flesh and grow you and cover you in skin. I will put breath in you so that you can come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Um, and so that's kind of, I liked this juxtaposition of on this particular printable of um, kind of the morbid idea of the skull, but then with the bright colors and just this idea this idea that God can bring just this beautiful thing from something that is considered sad and morbid and um, just bringing beauty from death, whether it's physical death or emotional or relational, whatever death that might be going on in your life, that he can turn it around into something beautiful, even if we can't see that kind of um, in the middle of our circumstances. So you can see I'm just working on um, doing some fussy cutting um, and just getting a nice little stockpile of images to be able to use on this project. And so uh, I'm cutting out what I think I'm going to need. You can see later in the video that, that I end up needing a few other things. Um, so I end up just cutting those out later. And um, so my background is almost dry. 
Um, I want to go ahead and hit it with a heat gun just because I don't want to risk any wet spots whenever I do this next part. Um, you can see in one of those um, little elements, um, I think it's the heart, um, that has all of these three colors, but then it also has that little bit of green right there. Um, and I wanted to incorporate that just a little bit, um, mainly because I kind of wanted that to represent hope and represent um, faith that God is going to turn things um, for good. And so I wanted it to be a bright contrast to my dark background. And next, I'm also using those same four colors in my background plus white, um, just to break up the background just a little bit, um, just with a wet paintbrush directly on my ink tents blocks um, and kind of doing a little splatter paint situation to, um, just, like I said, just add more color and break up that background just a little bit. Um, and you know, I am an 80s girl, so you know, any chance to splatter paint and I am all for that. Um, and like I said, with these ink tents blocks, they're fantastic because they're ink, so when they dry, they're permanent, but they activate like a watercolor. So you can do your splatter painting, you can do your, um, you know, whatever you, you want to do with them. Um, they're some of my favorite things to play with. And you can see you get a great, uh, really saturated background with them as well, and so I love that. Um, before I move on to using my matte gel medium to put them down, I want to go ahead and make sure my background is completely dry, just because I don't want to accidentally um, swipe up on a wet spot um, and end up covering up my images. I like to always, always, anytime I use a printable, do a dry run. So just playing with placement and playing with um, kind of how I want things to layer and how I think I want things to sit, um, which elements that I cut out that I actually want to use. Um, and I chose to leave the skull, the, the white triangle skull, um, white, because I really wanted it to pop um, against my background and against all of my um, various images. If you're not familiar with matte gel medium, it's very similar to Mod Podge, but it's uh, a little thicker um, and, <coughs> pardon me. And so just like that, you always want to make sure you put a layer underneath to act as your adhesive and then put another layer on top to act as your sealant. Um, it's going to increase the longevity and the, um, the strength of your project so you don't have to worry about things lifting up or any of that kind of stuff. So I'm kind of just making a little collage of these hearts and of that triangle and my um, little flowers that I cut out. And I'm just kind of layering them similar to what I um, had kind of laid out. But then I realized that I kind of had, was very, like, I don't know, it needed a few more layers. It was a little boring. So I went back to my printable and just started cutting out some, um, just some smaller flowers that I had kind of ignored earlier. Um, but now I kind of realized I needed them to just add some layers and add some more depth to the project so it wasn't so flat. And um, this is one of those projects that you kind of, that I kind of, I kind of needed. I've been kind of in a little funk the last couple days and um, just not feeling super creative and just kind of in my head a little bit. So today was a good day just to, um, in some ways, just slap paint down and just cut and glue like I'm in kindergarten and just kind of let go for a little bit and just have a chat with God and, you know, allow him to remind me that he can breathe life into dry bones, whether it's dry bones of creativity or dry bones of relationships or dry bones of work, whatever in your situation that it, you would consider dry bones. And um, this was just kind of that time for him just to remind me of that. And so it was definitely needed. And you can definitely tell it's different from my normal style because I covered up um, almost all the words. And that is definitely not my typical style. But I kind of, I don't know, I kind of felt like it was okay with this particular project um, for me because I just, I just needed to be able to express kind of that feeling of feeling hidden and feeling sad and feeling... Um, just feeling some stuff. <laughs> um, and that's one thing that's great about doing projects like this. You know, it's, it's words that you might not be able to get out in, you know, English or whatever your first language is. Um, sometimes you can express those in art and express those in Bible journaling um, and allow God to speak to you in a different way and remind you of things um, when you're in the process and when you're in the middle of a storm that doesn't seem like it's going all that great. So that's kind of what this project was about today, was just about 
I'm spending some time being reminded that not everything, um, even though it's raining and pouring here, but that's just a physical thing that's not God's word and that's not spiritual, that, you know, it's going to be okay. He can bring dead things to life again. And I was originally going to stamp or handwrite my kind of words here, but um, they ended up, this printable had them in the um, printable. So I went ahead and just cut them into strips. And you can see that I did truncate this because this actual scripture is uh, verses 30, chapter 37 of Ezekiel verses four through six. And I wanted to kind of truncate it to, um, to be a little bit more concise into one sentence. Um, and so obviously that's a little, a little um, artistic liberty to, to truncate scripture a little bit there. Um, I went ahead and hit it with a heat gun so that all of my gel medium was dry before I picked up my white jelly pin and just as it went around the edges. Um, definitely those were starting to blend into the background, which I wasn't mad at. I kind of picked those colors for a reason, but um, I wanted to hit the, everything with my white gel pen to give it some more pop and make it stand out a little bit more against all of those dark colors. And I'm also going and hitting the flowers with it, again, just to give them more pop and more definition. Um, I'm not being super specific around with the outline. And then you can see right there, I'm going and outlining the flowers and the leaves with that white. Again, just to give it more dimension and give it more pop and just to kind of make the project um, have more depth um, and just some more interest. But the outline is mainly just kind of scribbly, which is fine. Um, and even with the flowers, I'm not trying to redraw the flowers. I'm really just trying to give them some depth and uh, give them a little bit more creativity and some oomph. If that's, I think that's a creative word, right? Oomph. <laughs> um, so I'm loving where this is going, but I thought it needed just a little bit more. So I grabbed my black Sharpie and just did, um, um, again, not trying to be super fancy, super tight with it, but just adding um, some black to those white lines just to give it some contrast and some just some more depth and some more interest and outlining my words just a little bit to give them um, so they weren't so stark white against my background. I'm loving the way this is going. It really was, it was good for the creative soul to be able to kind of do this particular project today. Um, so I was happy with the way it turned out. And so you can see I'm just finishing up those few little things. Um, and then I'm gonna add the date here in just a minute and the project's pretty much done. Um, thank you guys for stopping by. I hope you will subscribe and click that like button. Have an awesome day.